Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm really excited to welcome one of New Zealand's own um, Richard Wells to join us tonight on eChat NZ. Um, talking about his book that he's just um, has just been released in the States and on Amazon, and um, I believe you here too, but Richard can tell us all about that. Um, welcome, Richard. Hi, everyone. Uh, so this is quite exciting. Um, and, and in fact, the whole year has been a bit crazy with this book thing. So, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to be here. <laughs> so, Richard, just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, okay, so I'm originally from England. We arrived in uh, 2006, and um, and uh, I, I've been teaching for a few years, and we came over here because after a three-week holiday here, we saw some schools um, with some kids up trees and things, which we, you, you weren't allowed kids up trees in the UK, so we were we wanted to come to a place where kids could still climb trees. So, uh, so uh, we... Uh, yeah, we, we sort of um, both agree. We're both teachers, my wife and I. So we both came over and um, and have yeah have, have never looked back. And uh, and now Brexit's happened, and we're uh, even gladder to be over here. We now have Kiwi passports, and so <laughs> I, I still have an English accent. My wife sounds Kiwi, and um, and we're very happy to have our Kiwi passports. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, Tell that's you what, a good it's something I'm great I'm grateful for as well. All the time is my Kiwi passport. Yeah. Um, four years ago, um, I started blogging. Um, yeah. Yeah, and be, I, I started blogging because I was helping ten teachers in my current in the school at the time with iPads, and I decided to stop answering the same question every day. So I started blogging just for ten people, and and that yeah. blog, because it was online, it just went completely crazy. Um, and so a blog that was for ten people turned into about quarter quarter of a million a year. And um, and yeah, it's just gone. It's it's mad. Um, and then I met people like you, Danielle, on Twitter, and uh, and and then four years later, the kid who kind of failed English at school gets asked to write a book. So here I am. That's <laughs> <It's> a wonderful <laughs> world, isn't it? <laughs> um, so. <laughs> One of the things that you talk, you've talked to me a little bit about is how this book came about. Um, do you want to just share a little bit about that story? Uh, yeah. Um, so I uh, blogged a few things um, about New Zealand, and I got invited um, some some very nice people at the uh, a couple of conferences in the states flew me over to just talk about New Zealand because it sounded kind of different. And I, uh, so I did these presentations about um, various aspects of stuff, little bits and bobs that go on in New Zealand and the way we do things. And, um, and then after doing that, I was approached by the EdTech team who run the Google summits around the world. And, um, and they said, look, we've, you know, we've seen this. You must write a book about this. This is an amazing book that the world needs to know about. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I sat down for the summer and um, went down to the the, uh, the family batch and uh, and yeah, a few a few hundred words a day, and I wrote a book, which is insane. So there you go. A little bit, uh, yes. Yeah, I just wanted a quick shout out for Erin Casey, the editor of this book, who who turned what I wrote um, into something that looked like English, which is great. So. Uh, <laughs> So thanks, Erin. Thank you very much for being an amazing editor. Thank you. There's a few people like that in the world. I know that um, a lot of the e-chat stuff that people see, the things that often look quite put together. Um, if it looks put together and there are no mistakes, it's usually because Philippa um, Antipas had a hand in it. Um, so it's, it's marvellous to have those people who can turn our um, English into actual English, eh? Yeah, yeah big <laughs> As well, and she, she looked over it and she pulled me out. It's good, yeah. Yeah, she's she's phenomenally phenomenal that way. So, um, just a reminder to those people watching that we'll be watching the um the normal eChat NZ stream on Twitter as well. That you can contribute your comments and your thoughts, um, and any questions for Richard in there, and we'll keep an eye on that as well as we go throughout the webinar. So, um, I think the next thing that I've that I'm personally wondering about is 
so they um you talked about you traveled and you, you were approached um about writing this book why was it that you felt that it was worth your summer to write this book i mean there's lots of other things you could have done with your summer holidays why why this book why make this effort why did you feel like the story was worth telling okay um the, I'm a, I'm a, I was, I've now got a Kiwi passport, but I was a foreigner. So I had this kind of outside view of, of, of what we do here. And I think that benefits me. I think it makes me appreciate what's going on here at more than the average Kiwi. I think, um, I think and, and after coming from the UK with such a, a, a very uh, rigid prescribed curriculum um, that must be delivered, um, and then talking to the Americans um, and, and the Australians, um, I, it was kind of obvious that, that what we do here in its, with its flexibility um, and, and that, that school devised curriculum, that local curriculum, just um, that whole, the, the way that our system is, devised, is, is designed towards personalization. Um, just suits what's happening in the 21st century more than, than these other countries um, this week. And, and what, what, he, what he described that was going on in Germany was, was one of the most frightening things I've heard so far. So, um, so, we're just, so I wrote this book for, for the foreigners to say, hey, this is incredible. You really need to know about this. Um, yeah. But I also wrote it for Kiwis to... to, to to hopefully help them appreciate how lucky we are because because i think kiwis who've grown up and seen the, the gradual change or whatever um and, and know a bit more of the history kind of don't recognize how vastly different it is to to teach in in this system compared with what it could be elsewhere yeah. so i think i think that's what that's why yeah so i agreed with with the EdTech team, I, I said, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think this, this is a, a message that needs to go out. I know that for me, as I read the book as well, that it felt like a celebration of all the incredible things that incredible educators around the country are doing. And they're not doing it because they have to, in a sense, like, you know, that's, that's their job and that's all they care about. They're doing it because they really care. Um, and as a result, the passion that you see and the, the and great amount of thought that goes into what they do, the research, the, the genuine innovation is pretty incredible. Yeah. And I, I, the thing I notice is that without, the, without a, a, a rigid, listed, prescribed curriculum, the depth of conversation that's going on amongst those people um, is, is just so much deeper. We're, that's how we are so much more ahead um, because our system allows us, to, uh, allows our conversation to, 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 to charge forward. Um, yeah. the, a, lot of those, a lot of the people, a lot of the, the, the guys in the UK and, and, and the people in the States, they are still, they're still predominantly fixed on a conversation about technology. Because mm. in, a, in, a, in a more of a delivery model system, or, um, it, it becomes a, the conversation can only go as far as how can we make this delivery more efficient? Yeah. So, so you find their conversations uh, and their chats and whatever still yeah, predominantly um, centered on technology. So Yeah. So in New Zealand, I think um, it's certainly something that I've noticed as well, that often, depending, of course, in the groups that you travel as well, but if you're looking for a really deep quality conversation, the kind that really tests ideas and evaluates them with real rigor and real thought, um, you can find a lot of it in New Zealand, and it's not hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are you... Um, I guess if, as you're thinking about this book, um, is there any particular story or any anything particular in there that really stands out for you on a personal level? Um, I mean, a lot, a good deal of um, 
Well, a percentage of the book is centered on my experience in 2015. I was very lucky. Um, core Education in, in Christchurch um, awarded me one of their e-fellowships, which, which is an amazing experience, um, predominantly because they, they fly you around the country to see the best of, of New Zealand. And with New Zealand being um, possibly the most flexible system in the world, that it's the, it's to some extent you're seeing the best of the best. And, and, and everywhere we went in our little team of sort of seven or eight, um, we, were, we were always inspired by, by what so many of these schools were doing within, they, they was, it was a matter of, of visiting places that were making the most of this system, of, 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 our, of, of our opportunity. Um, and it was, and, and what inspired me, and what again, what drove me to write the book a bit was to say, these people are still, uh, you know, this is what we're allowed to do. They are doing it. They're they're still fulfilling all the rules, um, and and more schools need to behave and and think like these guys do. So, so a big big shout out to Core Education because they, um, they 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 have an amazing team and. Um, and they are inspiring people themselves, and they inspire you by taking you places that, um, that are really uh, making the most of of what what Americans and, and British teachers can only dream of. You know, they, yeah. they don't. Have, there's the freedom that we have, and the, and the, yeah, the trust that we have. Yeah. A bit, a big, a big part of the book is about trust. You can't. There's very few countries in the world where who trust their teachers to devise. And choose topics and devise a local curriculum. So, uh, yeah, trust is a big theme of the book. So, from your personal experience, so you talk about trust and the importance of that personal curriculum to the community, um, but also um, you talk about that the real comparison that you bring because of your experience elsewhere. Where can you talk a little bit about what is that's like on a personal level for you? What that feels like on a day-to-day -day basis, being in schools in a country where we are trusted. Uh, sorry, they aren't trusted, or they are trusted. So, from your personal experience, what is that like? What's the difference working in those two spaces? That, um, trust. What does that feel like? Uh, well, you just in a in a country like the UK, where you're you're as I said, I mentioned in the book very briefly how I started my career quite excited because the UK provided me um, a full set of like almost self-run resources. I had a, a, a CD of PowerPoints which included videos. I had a a really nice glossy book of of almost exactly what to say. Um, and I thought, this is great. This is going to be easy. I just read the script and I show the videos, and then this is this job's going to be amazing. This job's going to be really easy. And um, and so, as I said, like I started the first PowerPoint, and you see, you you know you watch children fall asleep in front of you, and and um, and you realise that even in what is it, two thousand and three, whenever it was, two thousand two, um, I quickly realised that I was just I was uh, in that sort of context. You're 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 a bad version of the internet. You know you you're like you the internet exists, but the system is pretending that it doesn't. So become this yeah. sort of humanized bad internet, and um and, and that's what they feel. Really. They feel. I mean, I was talking to Joe Dale. He's fairly well known on Twitter. He's a language mm -hmm. specialist, and. Uh, and part of my conversation, he he couldn't he couldn't even because he he's in the UK um, and understands the UK system. He couldn't really picture a lot of some things that I was saying because he hadn't experienced teaching in in our system. Um, and other parts, he was highlighting how the UK are, are predominantly driven by the examining boards, the people who who write you know, who write the exams and, and even the government probably doesn't have as much influence as the, as the examination boards that, that, that create all the exams. And so, so you really are just a, a delivery, a very, a very um, mm. archaic delivery system. 
And I think there's so certainly. Yeah, I was going to say. Go ahead. The old, the old Google Hangout issue. Um, <laughs> you don't feel as valued because you are you're being treated as a delivery um, machine. So, so you don't um, you naturally don't yeah, feel yeah. as valued. And there's certainly um, if you there's some incredible stories right from throughout the country emerging more and more now around how schools are using NCEA and using it in a creative way that really works for their learners and that's really personalized to their learners pathways their interests their passions hmm. yeah i think ncas i use ncf quite a lot in the book because because um, a lot of educators when you start talking about this type of thing about flexibility in 21st century and modern learning and all this they a lot of uh, a lot of conservative or traditional teachers might gravitate towards the argument of saying yes but there's exams and yes you know you have to assess so to, to the joy of explaining to Americans that the schools that have really got to grips with NCA and, and have really have, are really starting to appreciate the uh, the uh, the opportunities that NCA offers um, and now Realizing that it should be a personalized, you know, individual's uh, assessment system where somebody simply uses it to prove their own capabilities and their own their own mm. um, their own skills, and uh, and and that's it was great. So a month ago to go to an event where NZQA outlined that their four year plan is that the that individual New Zealand students will will have their own personalised assessment plan, and so so even even our examining board are moving away from or are starting to discuss and move away from the idea that you teach a class and and a class who are doing a subject will all be assessed in the same way, you know, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, we're at so that sort of discussion is at a level that that these other countries can't can't imagine. I can I can tell you from yeah. talking to educators in those countries. They go. I think yeah. one of the things that always for me, when I feel like you know I've hit the wall, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. But it's Twitter night and I've got to get my game face on and I actually like the game typey fingers on Twitter night, really. Um, the thing that always keeps me going is New Zealand is so, not only are we ahead of the game in many places, but we're actually also small enough that this, that we're small enough that we can really do this together. It, it doesn't, and we can already see that we, we've, NZQA, like we've, they're already on board. We've had um, just recently um, over the last school holidays, um, we had our chat with um, NZIC Curriculum Online talking with them together about how we can engage our community. So for us, we're engaged with across the system, everyone and every, everyone has a say. So we are all valued and it, it really does make me feel hopeful, even on the nights when I'm feeling pretty tired. And I imagine probably a lot of that feeling was shared by you if you've given up your school holidays to write a book. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I have children and I still appreciate their existence. And I, um, it, was only, it was only 500 words a day, so it was maybe an evening, maybe an afternoon. So just, uh, yeah. yeah. It wasn't quite the whole summer holiday, but... but um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure there were some like Star Wars memes that came out over that time as well. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get popular, just mention Star Wars, link anything to Star Wars, and it just goes crazy. <laughs> oh, I remember weird. that. Maybe we'll like add some more conference like pro promo tweets and add some yeah. Star Wars in. Definitely. <laughs> it goes, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so for you, what as you wrote this book and on your journey, what was what kind of was the unexpected moments of learning for you? Um, how to act like a, a grown up and actually check your sources and things that was quite um, <laughs> doing things properly. That was quite, you know, 
I, I, I wasn't yeah. very good. I wasn't very good at school, so to, to actually do things properly was quite scary. I was very lucky. I'd mentioned a few people in the book. Yeah. Um, a few principals like uh, Maury Abraham. He might be watching. So hi, Maury. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and I, was, and I, you know, you do. You meet certain people. You see certain people. Um, Anne Milne, and and you just yeah. they. That we yeah we because I mean they they are amazing but they are ama they're being amazing within an amazing system so they they have this they um because I I tried I tried to do a bit of a uh, a bit of a chat about the, the cultural stuff that goes on in this country mm -hmm. and the respect the respect the the effort that we put in as a country to to respect the the, the cultures within this country um, mm. and, and there's a lot of effort that's a lot of time and effort and money and and, and, and the fact and the benefit that we get from that um, and and seeing these principals running these incredible sc inspiring schools that that appreciate the individual um, and uh, yeah it's, it's, it was very really, I've met some very inspiring people over the last four years and uh, and we're very lucky to have these these amazing leaders who are again making the most of mm. of this incredible system that we have so um, yeah I, um, it, I think um, yeah so so I was able so after mentioning these people to check with them that what I'd written about them and their schools was okay and to get the to get the okay from them to say thanks very much that was uh, it was kind of big big relief as every time that came through so uh, <laughs> So that was uh, that was good. Um, it was, but it was nice just to reflect. But you know, as, as again, I mentioned TAI in, in the book. I mentioned that our our sort of inbuilt systems of reflection and the way that American, uh, the way that Kiwis talk about reflection as as quite a regular thing. Um, which again is is not a conversation that other countries have. Other educators in other countries yeah. have not. Not, not as much, not, not, not systematically, right? like it's not built into the system like we have. Yeah. Um, so, so really the book for me was just after four years of blogging, it was just a, uh, an almighty reflection. It was just, um, it was just uh, like... <laughs> I you, like that, an almighty reflection. <laughs> almighty reflection, it was just, these are, these are all, the, all the things I've come across and every one of them yeah. has, if I explain any minor, sub chapter of my book to to a foreigner it normally either amazes them or confuses them it just uh yeah yeah it's 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 been quite it was in that sense it was quite easy to write because i just had yeah. to just mention it mention any kiwi educator thing i'd heard of knowing that it would probably amaze people so so there you go so that's really what the book is yeah I really, like I said earlier, I really do feel like it is a celebration of everything that happens here. Um, what, so this year for you, you've taken on um, more of a leadership role as well. Um, what did you learn from your book that you're holding close to your heart in this new role for yourself? Um... I guess um, I guess the feedback I've had from the book and the, and the feedback I've had um, from my blog has um, has moved me to to the sense to, to you know it's moving to a feeling that maybe I am a leader um, and so I guess I've, been, I've 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 got this deputy principal role now and I guess part of Applying for that, or, or applying for these sort of roles, um, as, as you know, in, in true twenty-first century fashion, has come from blogging. It's come from yeah. it's come from educators around the world and, and putting my stuff down. Um, um, big shout out for anyone with an art degree, because um, really, I'm, I'm I think I'm predominantly famous not for what I write, but for the way I color in. Um, I can hide it. So, so, so for those still coloring in, um, keep up the coloring in. It's it's um, it, it get yeah it can get you places. Um, so 
so yeah, so through all that, I just people, yeah, the the, the immense amount of feedback you can get these days from once you've got the, your little tribe. Um, yeah, it's it's just this. Um, I always say that 2005, 2006 was the the rebirth of the, um, or even the birth of the the teacher profession. It was this suddenly because social media was free and teachers hadn't been hadn't been offered the kind of budgets that other professions had had to, to go around and act like, you know, go to conferences and act like professionals and you know, fly around the world and look, look at their profession. And they weren't, you know, we weren't, we weren't afforded those, those kind of luxuries as, as a pro I think with social media being free and, and developing events and things for, for, for free, like, we've, like you've done with EdChat NZ, mm -hmm. I think we have, in, just in the last decade, we have grown the sense that we are a profession. And, and so, so what I've done in the last sort of four or five years is, is just an example of an individual educator realizing they weren't just a, a body in the room, they weren't just a teacher in a classroom, they, they were a member of a, of a worldwide profession that was that, that, that had trends and that was moving forward and, and whatsoever. So, so social media um, for me was looking at it was the rebirth um, and possibly the birth of the, of the teaching profession. Yeah. Um, and and I, so that spurred me on. To, so, so I get confidence from that, and 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 I I, I have my say, and and most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, the feedback is positive. So. Yeah. And I think um, certainly there's a number of important things that you said in there. Um, that idea of teachers and uh, it's very much what sits behind everything in chat means that it's about us owning who we are as a profession. We're not just a body in a room anymore. We're there we're with a heartbeat and a soul and we care. And what's more, we can think for ourselves. I think there's... Um, it's something that you said a few times tonight as well, and that comes through your book, obviously, as well, is this idea of teachers being trusted to make decisions, schools being trusted to make decisions, because we do actually think for ourselves, we don't have an exam board or um, a million levels of hierarchy that almost deprofessionalize us because we don't make decisions for ourselves. So I think there's something incredibly powerful in for me in any way um in the enormous amount of teachers who are increasingly stepping up and becoming i almost want to say more professional because they're thinking for themselves more and more and sharing their thinking and not just always looking for the positive feedback but actually looking for the feedback that's going to help them get better and grow um, mm. and i think there's so much power that in that those are the kinds of professionals that are sitting in our education system and making it as powerful as it is. Um, and day by day, week by week, doing even more so. Yeah, I think I've been saying to, to the teachers in my school recently how, how we, were, we were educated through a system that treated us as, as batches, as, as classes mm. uh, of kids rather than individuals. And, and you can see in the, the current teaching body um that they still that changing that mindset so so appreciating that you are, you're not just one of the teachers um in a school who just does that teacher thing you are an individual so so the, the teacher registration and the, and, the, and the professional development that's required in that and the, and the teach um teaching as inquiry look into your own practice i mean i always say that to, TAI was introduced um, as a way of, in, of, of, of introducing to teachers the idea that, hey, why, look at your own practice and develop it and, mm. and actually consider what you're doing and you aren't just a... So we're sort of going through this process of having to educate teachers to, yeah. to realise they're individuals before we can expect them to teach kids as individuals. Yeah, so, and really, as the kind of kids we also want to 
it's like it's the kind of the kinds of things we want for our futures we want people who can think for themselves and can make big decisions and work with other people in collaborative ways the way we see our teachers role modeling for them yeah i think as we've, we've as i've, I've blocked them uh, it's not so much we we want it's just that they 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 need to be the 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 the, the, the in the next 20 years, as, as thousands of reports have shown, the, the job market's going to change so much that the, you'll have to be able to make, you know, be a decision maker and, and, and make decisions about how you go about stuff and how you connect and how you, you, know, you, you find projects and how you, you connect with your community or whatever it is. You, you've got to... An important part of education now is to show value themselves and their skills, and and, and not treat them like um, a class. I, I I tell my kids now, you are not you're not a class. You are you are individuals, and you must stop walking into rooms and thinking as a class or, or a year group. So, mm. so yeah. for you, in what you've seen. Um, and other places in the world and in New Zealand, what do you think that we still might need to do a bit more of? Um, well, I guess I wrote the book because um, there's still too many schools and, and departments within schools and and teachers, you know, at all levels, who simply just need to start um, increasing their awareness. They, we need to find ways of, of just... Of, make, of continuing our our push through through things like the social media to, to make people make more Kiwi educators aware of of what's available. Um, the number of Kiwi educators, our, our biggest conference um, for any foreigners who are watching, our biggest conference in, the, in this country is You Learn, um, and you have about two thousand educators, two thousand Kiwi educators that go to go to You Learn. Um, the number of Kiwi educators I talk to now, even even this week, who've never heard of you, learn. you know, they've yeah. been teaching, they've been teaching in our in Auckland, our major city for for 10, 15 years, um, and they've never heard of the main conference that happens every year and has happened for for ten or more than a decade. Yeah, um, where to, you know. Um, because they're not, because it, you know, because they still live in a in that old model of I am a teacher in a room, and, and that's all I need to worry about. Um, mm -hmm. So, so the one thing we've got to work on is awareness of what's available and what's going on, and and the other, the, the next step is to is to push Kiwi educators to to do what those the schools in the book and the teachers in the book are doing, mm -hmm. and that's making the most of it and and realizing it there's there's more to education than just delivery. So. Yeah, New so Zealand's got, uh, Yeah, I was, was just going to finish this. Yeah, go ahead. Um, 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 yeah, that's the, I guess that's the main push of the book, is to, is to make sure um, that Kiwi educators yeah, start to use this system and appreciate what system we've got and, and start using... Um, and realizing what I say to foreigners that our system is a is ahead of of many of our teachers' mindsets. It's like if you put it all together, uh, what we can what we're allowed to do with our system um, is actually the system is ahead of many Kiwi teachers, and we've just got to bring we've just got to do a back catch up. I think. Um, that said, that's not an easy job that you've identified for us there, is it? Uh, no, it's, um, it's <laughs> going to be fun, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So as we, as we work at getting more teachers, um, more school leaders in some places, as we work at getting more people on board, how, how do we do that in your opinion? Like what, what can the individual do that has come outside of the single classroom, has climbed out the windows and gone, wow, there's a world outside. How do we bring others on board? You're talking about the lone nut, aren't you, in the school, your favourite, <laughs> your favourite um, place. Um, that, that's 
just me. I feel like I, I really identify with a bit of crazy dancing from time to time. Yeah. You're, just bear in mind, everybody, that Danielle does work in one of the, the crazy schools that are mentioned in the book. So let's, uh, uh, she's, a, she's a lone nut amongst nuts. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, yeah, I think, um, I think just, just like everything's happened with social media, I think that within a school, you know, you, you do, you just build it up. You, 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 you buddy up with somebody, you, you take them through it, you, you get them to play around with ideas. I think, I think again, I, th I think the fact that as leaders in schools and, and department leaders, um, we do have, I mentioned in the book, the, the registration, the, 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 t the practicing certificate process that we have um, is, a, is a very powerful tool to say, not that we're judging you, but these are the areas that New Zealand are hoping teachers to grow in. And, and this isn't a compliance thing. This is a, is, this is a growth chart. This is a growth rubric to say these are all the areas that, that you can grow in. Um, and I think, again, our, the, the, that initiative um, that we have there is is enough for for a leader to to have these com like to have conversations with with their with their teachers to say, hey, that we're being asked, you know, is, I'm I'm not judging you and I'm not gonna push you, but we as Kiwi educators, we're asked to to maintain these growth areas, and so so let's have a look at how we can how you're growing in these or how you might grow in these areas, and then um, a, a lot of countries don't have that. Um, in the UK, once you're a qualified teacher, you're a qualified teacher. There's, there's no further check. Um, and so, so you, can, you can carry on doing what you've always done. And, and no one, there's no system or systematic way of, of, of checking that or, 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 um, or considering reflection on it. So, so again, it's, uh, these, these, the t teaching of inquiry and the practice certificate systems are are really mm -hmm. positive and, and actually a big that's, that's a big shift that we're going through is to try and get kiwi educators yeah. to see those things as as really positive um yeah and not not judgment things they're they're they're, they're all about what what teachers it, it's about celebrating is have always done quietly in, in some ways um yeah yeah so again okay. We're lucky to have them. I completely agree. And I think, um, let's say that's from the perspective of two bloggers, though. You know, there's, um, even though, you see, as you say, there's a lot of colouring in <laughs> for you. But um, <laughs> there's, um, you know, there's some real merit in taking stock of our own practice and identifying what is going well where perhaps things are not going as well as they should be and the enormous value there is in that and in terms of setting next steps and that continued growth because of as individuals within our system grow, we the whole system grows and we um yeah, we we become something better together. Um just starting to wrap up a little here, Richard. Um as we um as you kind of think about your book and the stories you've encountered and the kind of steps you've taken with e-fellows and all the many great adventures for you, what what is the thing that you are spending your nights and days thinking about now? Um, what are the challenges that you're really grappling with? Um, well, the, the one currently that's that's completely absorbing, I, I tend, I, I watch a TED talk. It's one. I'm one of those. I now watch TED talks, and and it can be a TED talk about um, dolphins in somewhere, and I'll still manage. My head will still manage to link it to education, or link it to oh, <laughs> that, obviously, obviously that means. Um, and so, so it's currently people can't say anything to me uh, um, without me thinking that it's to do with. Um, learner agency to do with to do with kids actually realizing that they're individuals and realizing that they could take charge of of what they do in the day and and and, and because 
particularly working in a secondary school, I know I've been to kindergartens, I've been to primary schools, I've been to intermediate schools who, who generally are doing a better job in this area um, than secondary schools and, and high schools. Mm. And, uh, and I work in a, in a high school where, where um, I can, it, it's sad to talk to, to, to teenagers who, who, who arrive at school and simply don't consider what they might do today. They, they don't consider um, themselves as, they don't consider school as somewhere where you're, where, which has been put together for you to develop. They, 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 they consider school as a place you come to and you wait for, for work to be issued. And you, um, a really popular quote from, that I had from a, Year seven boy two weeks ago, and I've, I've tweeted it out loads, and because it really, yeah, and it's been it's it's quite a popular one, and and and, and I and I tried it. It came about because I was having a, a very heartfelt. It was a boy in a bit of uh, having a few difficulties, and and I so I started with the positive as you do, like what's your favourite subject? Let, let's go with something you really like, mm -hmm. and he said art, and I said. I said, oh, that's art. And he said, we're making clay animals. And I said, oh, that's great. Why are you making clay animals? And he said, I don't know. It's, it's like a maths test. They, uh, the teachers give you this stuff and you do it. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, so just, just giving, just reorganizing schools and just not changing, maybe changing what we do and what the content we look at, but just reframing it and asking the kids or well, how are you gonna how mm -hmm. would you tackle this this is a this is a this is some material this is a problem so how do you want to do it you know and, and then and making them think about themselves and making them think about how they might go about something um it seems quite obvious and you and when you even when i explain it to secondary school teachers it does seem obvious and they do agree that secondary school, high school kids are. Yeah, I'm being absorbed at the moment by, uh, you know, our students, our, our children, thinking about themselves and thinking about how they might go about mm -hmm. getting stuff done, which is just so and basic, but. Yeah, and the conditions that we create in schools often where we actually take their autonomy away from them, where we, we tell them what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and we don't give them an opportunity to think for themselves. And then when they don't think for themselves, we get mad, even though we took all their opportunities away to learn to do yeah. that. Um, and then we send them to university and they, you know, stress out because now they have to like manage themselves, but we never gave them a chance and now they have to, you know, all of that stuff. So um you can totally get where you're coming from. It takes practice and, and it's sad it was it was it's it's sad to see, you know, um in kindergartens and, and primary schools doing a lot of this, doing doing bits of this. Uh, I've done another post on how the the senior year of every school will have them running assemblies um, and and they'll have positions yeah. of responsibility and they will be prefects and then they move to the next school, the next stage where they are the babies. So they're put on, they're sat on mats and told what to do. So so mm -hmm. so so our system around the world. See, to see its own, see each school sees it as as important leaders with some decisions to make, and then they move to the next stage where they're they're sort of dragged back to uh, to not making any. So so again, and, and I think I briefly mentioned the communities of learning in the book. I mean, I think mm -hmm. I think that is going to be that is going to be big. I think that will start. I mean, it's odd to think that it was. It's it's encouraging schools to work together, um, which you know, given that we all teach those same kids on that same track, is is uh, mm. yeah, it's amazing. These these common, it's wonderful to see these common. What I think is common sense ideas actually coming to fruition and actually starting to take off. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. There's certainly there's a huge amount of opportunities for us to seize within our system 
um, if we keep our eyes open and look for them, there's many, many different possibilities and opportunities created wherever you are. It's just a case of opening the door, get outside the classroom, having a look. And often, if you're already outside the classroom, it's going to knock on the teacher next door and go, hey, have you had a look at this? Like, come and get involved. Mm. Inviting our yeah. neighbours to the party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Richard, um, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, as we start wrapping up for this, um, what's your what's your big hope will come from this book? Um, I hope it will um, it will spread the good work that's going on in New Zealand to more places around New Zealand. I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it will. I hope it, it will start conversations in other countries. I know that it's it's sold. I think it's so far sold in about nine countries. Um, so I hope it will start. It is starting conversations uh, in other countries. Um, mm. But here, I just hope it will it will sell the good work that these 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 leading schools are doing. Um, yeah. It will sell. It will sell these the initiatives um, that we have, like teaching as inquiry and everything as such positive things. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you approach them as, with a positive mindset, you, you can make a lot of them. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just hope it it starts more Kiwi educators making more of, of our... We're so lucky um, and, and to, to, to have the opportunities that we have. And so to watch... Not enough Kiwi educators making the most of that is 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 really what the book's aimed at. So yeah. So um, yeah. So so here's to uh, here's to New Zealand um, <laughs> and and happy birthday, Steve Maldi. <laughs> chuck that in. Um, I don't know if he's also drinking um, Panhead Supercharger, but I am. Um, <laughs> so happy birthday, Steve. Uh, Steve Baldy, an amazing educator, um, part much cleverer than me. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully his book will be out soon, maybe. So uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, so I'm just sort of thank, thanks for thanks for doing this. Um, it's been it's been good fun. You're welcome, and um, you've you've certainly um, you've been along on the Echat NZ ride for some time as well. So um, we're excited to be able to share this with you um and then for anyone who's watching as well um richard um you're coming along to the echat nz conference um next weekend as well i believe yeah yep. come and get I'll your book signed yeah we can have signed books it's got a new cover now if you can get a copy quickly it's got a new we're on to cover two already so uh, <laughs> So yeah, um, um, yeah I'll so, be there. I, I think are we still wearing onesies. I don't know if we're still wearing onesies. I've got my onesie ready. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be. Well, I'm I'm a little bit tempted. I'm feeling a little bit anti-establishment of late, so I'm feeling like I might want to dress like a serious punk rocker. Be like, you know, I'm challenging challenging systems here. Like, go. It's not enough for me that there are some bits of good stuff going on. There has to be more places. There's more kids that. Um, yeah, so I, I might go for punk rocker ones there. Yeah. I don't know if there is such a thing. Put some safety <laughs> pins in my flamingo one. I don't know, but. <laughs> Maybe a dinosaur. Maybe you you got the spiky. Ah, I've got flamingo. a dinosaur, but it has a tail that is super awkward because it's enormous and you sit down and 